All right, all right. Just wanted to give TikTok some time to come on in. Wanted to give TikTok time to come on in. The last time I was live, I had the most people I have ever had watching me live on TikTok. So I got to give the tap hat tip tip hat to you TikTok watchers, followers, and viewers, and 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 tell you I appreciate you all. I didn't know that. I didn't. So now I've got to look Zoom, Facebook, all that. Y'all going to be got to take the back seat because y'all don't be even watching me. I ask y'all to like stuff. Y'all don't do none of that. So I'm going to focus most of this recording not on the screen here. I'm going to talk to my TikTok. I talked to the TikTok audience because they actually gave a damn. And I had 2,400 people looking at me. Uh, the last time I was live. So I really want to tell TikTok, I appreciate you guys, man. And I got number love and respect for you guys. I had a lot of viewers last time. And so Facebook, Zoom, y'all going to have to get in where you fit in. If you're watching me, you're watching me. If you don't, you're going to just catch the recording because I'm going to spend time looking at TikTok because I, that, I'm thankful for that. I really am appreciative of that because I'm not here to play with you guys. I'm not here to waste your time. I'm not here to, to preach to you. Um, I, I, even though I am a minister and I wear that, uh, banner, uh, respectfully, honorably, what I mean is don't get me wrong that I teach the scripture and I know the scripture, but I don't feel like the most high wants me to spend my time, uh, uh trying to push that down people's throats. So I changed my, 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 my approach a little bit and I've got a whole library of Bible studies on our YouTube channel that you can go check out. And it, I mean, I tear apart the scriptures from Old Testament to New Testament to the Apocrypha to the books they took out. We can go there. You come to me and let's talk about it. That's the kind of preacher I am. Don't give me what you heard. Don't give me what you regurgitated. Because that's what is wrong with the church today is they regurgitate stuff. They say something that mommy and daddy said. You said that because mommy and daddy said that. You didn't open up not one scripture and say, where did the Most High say that and how did he say it and who was he talking to? That's what you got to do when you're going through the scripture. You can't just pull out some sentence and say, uh, he said no weapon. Well, he didn't say that for somebody that's going to habitually live in sin. You're going to have some weapons. Why you think he said blessings and curses? Come on, y'all. So I ain't coming to preach. That's not what we're here today for. What we're here today for is for the update of this ridiculousness, racism that I have been experiencing within the Fulton County area. And I'm not going to be ashamed to talk about it every day. You know what? Because if they jumped on there and was watching me secretly and said, does he ever sleep? No, I don't. I, no, hell no. I can't sleep because my life, my family can't sleep. My entire life has been turned upside down and I've been quiet as a mouse for two years. And now I'm sick of this. I'm going to ring the bell. Somebody's going to be held accountable for what? They took us through, and there was no consequences for this behavior. None. Now, let's talk about the mayor of Swan. Let's start there, because this is an issue. Well, before we get to him, we already can see that there's some, some, some differences in the response of this situation. Now, you're not going to tell me that had I been... Let's say I was Caucasian and I made all of these same national complaints. Listen, I want you guys to understand that there is a complaint, a formal complaint with, from my team and myself in just about every governmental office that there possibly could be that we can lodge a complaint because we have a legitimate reason to complain. We're not just, a, my ancestors didn't get beat over the head for me to be afraid to complain when I have a real legitimate reason to complain. I'm not sitting here saying something and trying to scam you. You can go back and look at the videos of when I opened up that store. See, everything I do when I do business, I put it to the public. 
Why? Because I'm a successful networker. When I build something, I pull people in. We did a hundred thousand dollars in sales in eight months, and I've got the receipts. So everything these guys would like to pull in court. I have the receipts. Going through the first details of the first case, apparently this first scam of an attorney that I had, he must have had some kind of an inner working deals with these guys. How are you making decisions and I don't even know about it? And this is happening all in the Fulton County Courts. They signing documents back and forth. Mr. Kimball don't know what the hell is going on with none of this. I'm being told, don't say nothing about the racist stuff that's happened to you because you're going to ruin your bad faith case. This is coming from the attorney. I've got the receipts and I got witnesses to prove that too. A live witness that wants to come, hopes that we go to court so he can come and sit on the stand. And guess what? He's not black. So don't pull the old, we going to pull up a team. No, I got white friends that understand me and I understand them. And, and they, some of them are appalled for some of the things I'm going through and can't wait for us to get to the Ohio Supreme Court. We're almost there. So these guys, but let's get back to where I have an issue. The first issue is the fact that all these complaints, nobody has tried to reach out. Now I have put in the letter, there's no negotiating of my terms. And I stand behind it. You're not taking any credibility from me. And we go to court, that's when they start taking credibility from you, when you start saying different than what you told, you put out. So my terms are not changing State Farm or McNeil's. But if you don't want to reach out to me, give me your attorney's information, please. Because I promise you, I will be on the phone with your attorney as soon as they open the doors. What time? Tell me. I promise you. Mr. Kimball's ringing them at 8. You tell me 8.30, I'm on that phone at 8.28, waiting for the door. Because here's the deal. I'm not afraid to speak to anybody. I don't care what your job position is. You think that scares me because you have an attorney? No, I've been the one that was wronged here. So you can get whatever Johnny Cochran scam you want to try to get to defend why you allowed your staff to call me Harambe, why you allowed, you called me the token black guy. You allowed them to call me Toby. You allowed the Afro Sheen jokes for seven years, man. And don't try to say you didn't or try to defend it. You paid me a hundred grand a year to just take it. And I took it. Until February of this year, you called me impersonating the same racist cops that neglected my business, y'all. How did they neglect my business? They were notified that the alarms were going off at 645. They're two minutes walking distance from the store, y'all. I'm right next door to Tano's Pizza, the hottest pizza place in downtown Swan. When you drove up Main Street, you could not come up the street without seeing me and my wife's establishment that took us weeks and months to put together. We've got it all on camera. Video, these guys do not want to go to court to prove that we didn't re completely remodel this place from ground up. Oh, we had a land contract recorded with uh, uh, the, the Fulton County, the Swanton area. Land contract, purchase agreement, y'all. So when there's a purchase agreement on a property, the landowner does not get to lock the person out of the property and hold their stuff hostage. This went on, y'all. Do you know we had to file action in court and she signed an agreement in return for my signature to give her the building that she would disclose who at State Farm told her information about my policy. Because I'm smart enough to know that there's an issue when she can tell me that we're being denied before I know. And I'm the only one. Somebody talk to me like I'm two here. This is what pisses me off about State Farm. Y'all have had two years to fucking figure this out. 
You can't answer that. Just like you can't answer why the police were late and you want to investigate one of the officers of the corporation happened to be me. We had a recorded corporation, y'all, set up with the state of Ohio. You can look it all up. Now it's ruined. Our name is mud. We owe everybody. There's tax bills. We are upside down in everything. My finances are upside down in everything. I've lost cars in repossession. I have went through hell because of all of this, y'all. Okay, they've ruined it all. It wasn't just some guy opening up a building and putting some CBD on the shelf. I delivered a wholesale distribution corporation as well as a retail store. So what I mean by this is we had wholesale customers that supplied their own retail locations. We got the evidence of this. The place was huge. What do you tell me? You can't tell me how much I had in here in inventory. That's the last argument they threw in, that my personal income didn't match the inventory. It's a damn corporation. I have partners. Why didn't you call my partners? They didn't try to call any of them. And we have the evidence of that because guess who one of my partners is? I'm smart. When I set up a corporation as a smart person who's trying to make sure he sets his family up for life, what do you think one of my partners is? My wife. I told my wife weeks upon weeks upon weeks, they're going to call you. They're taking me through some stupid ass investigation. Don't ask me why, but they claim they're going to call you. Be ready to answer. They never called her. And there's a beautiful thing in court called discovery. So if, if I'm wrong on that, we'll get the records, guys. I'm not trying to hide anything, especially when I'm trying to get to the Ohio Supreme Court, because I don't trust Fulton County as far as I can throw them on any level. Y'all let us get robbed twice. And nobody has stood up and manned up and stroked the check just because of that. Forget everything else that happened. What about when me and my wife showed up to retrieve our mail and the door's locks were changed and everything inside was gone? What about that? Y'all don't think we got evidence of that? Y'all don't think that I went in there and took pictures of my condition of this building after the first incident? Who you think got the pictures of a nigger? You think they got, gave me that? No, I did. So there's evidence of what we had left in the store after the first incident. We're downtown, guys. So, Mayor, you over here, our insurance agent is over here, because we still covered under the policy, even though I'm investigating, unless you can show me some evidence of where you denied it. You can't. So if we're still covered as a corporation, how in the hell do we get robbed again? And you still ain't even paid for that. Forget the first argument that we obviously still got to go to court to prove our innocence. Fine. I got a whole different story than what y'all had. I'm the only person that the story has not changed since the beginning. Their story has changed twice already. They first started off with I had something to do with the hate crime against my own business, y'all. Like, I had some magical power to know that the police were going to be notified from the alarm company at 645. They two minutes walking distance, but they ain't going to get there until 645, or 715. 715, y'all. That right there is a scam. What the? Explain that. Nobody can answer that. Nobody wanted to stroke the check for that. So, Fine. You don't want to look like you had something to do with it, Officer Rex or whatever you want to say your name is. Were you eating donuts? Where were you? Because you're two minutes here. All day long, y'all coming up and down this street. Y'all know exactly who we are. Y'all, we're the only African-American business at that time in this, in this town. So they, everybody knew us. Trust me when I tell you. I don't care what kind of front. That's why I want to go to the Ohio Supreme Court. I don't want, I don't trust Fulton County. Everybody out there know everybody. Everybody's in everybody's back pocket. And that's why we got scammed last time. None of this racist stuff that happened to me was ever even presented to the court. You can go back and see the documents. It was softly said that I was wrongfully interrogated, y'all. They danced over that. 
So the last attorney that I had just put it in there real soft to State Farm. Didn't tell him what truly went down. Didn't tell him how they told me and my sister, hey, can you guys come on over for a statement? Well, yeah, of course. We don't, we, we don't want no problems with none of y'all. Y'all paying us a paycheck. And trust me when I tell you, everybody I know when nobody hanging around Smart in Ohio at no damn five o'clock in the morning. And if it was anybody that I knew it was me and nobody I knew, no, they didn't mess with me out there. But my grandmother hated it. I've got friends and partners on the corporation that they never even came out there. They let me do all of that. Why? Because they hated it. Now, I'm going to get back to how State Farm let a bunch of people's personal information get breached, too, that they're not even wanting to talk about. They don't want to deal with none of this stuff. This is what I included in my demand this last time because I'm thinking about this. I know what is out there. They don't. But here's the reality. They completely ruined our entire lives and that, if not thousands of other people that just don't even know it yet. And trust me, I know how to get you out. I know what to be. I'm the great girl. I know what to do. But we got to identify it first. So if there's an issue, you need to get your credit report. You can get your credit report every week, once a week, for free. Just go to the bureaus and get your stuff in there and get it for it. See something weird on there, and you and I had some dealings, get with me, because I'm going to help you get it cleaned up. Because I guarantee you, if I touched it, nine times out of ten, it was in my office that was in that building, too. See, all of that don't be talked about. They don't say none of that. Like, I ain't have nobody else coming out there besides teenagers. All of my customers were 50 years and older. I, the physical therapist in town was referring customers to us. This is what was truly going on. And I got the evidence of this 100 five-star ratings in eight months of opening. This is what I was able to accomplish with this business just in retail. So we're talking about a business that everybody knew. Every year they have this little Halloween hoopla party downtown where every business opens up with the Halloween garbage outside and kids come out and give out candy. We were the electricity source for it one year. So I want you guys to understand who I was in this community at one point until somebody put into the nose into the air. He had something to do with it. Now, I want y'all to tell me who you think it could be out of this equation here. Now, I've named all the, the people that we're going to pull back into court. I'm not, I'm not, I ain't forgotten nothing up here. And I keep notes and I keep records. So ain't none of this. All of these people, they cannot tell me what happened to me. That's the good thing about all of this. I'm the only African-American in this whole common denominator, y'all. Let's make sure we put that in the mix here. See, they want to say I'm pulling the race car. Well, let's pull it. Damn it. Let's pull it. I'm going to keep pulling until you understand what you did to my family. Damn, Marquis Kimball. But my wife and my kids have suffered for two years. And you have no evidence, factual proof of anything. And you make up that I had something to do with. And nobody ever says, wait a minute, common sense. I don't got to go to school. I don't have to have a degree to know that if Mr. Kimball had something to do with anything that happened into this business or anybody he knew, he would have to know that the cops are going to be an hour late or he would have got caught. Nobody even looked at that. No, they brought their racist ass special investigator in called Lonnie Johnson. Let me tell you how racist this guy was, okay? I tried to email him, and it bounced back. So I, I maybe they fired him. And I can understand why. Because, see, I, they started it out with some racist stuff, y'all. I, when I tell you, they started out the gate racist from beginning. Let's start when I showed up to my store after the incident. Now... When I got alerted, of course, I'm getting dressed to go out there, okay? By the time I get out the house and get in the car, it's like, ain't no, me rushing out, what? 
at this time, I, I had my gun license, but I had not had a gun, so I didn't have any protection. And me rushing out there to do what at this point? The police are notified. They've told me after they told the police. So at this point, me risking getting a ticket and all that was no point. I took my time like I normally would. I woke up. I'm like, I got cameras. I'm, I'll deal with it when I get there. That's how you are when you're a business owner that you feel like you've set up a successful business. When we got this business set up, I became the boss boss for real. Like I ain't, my wife and them did that. I, I ain't, they dealt with the store. I hated it. I ain't want to sit in there. I like to sneak in and sneak out, but customers, they prefer to deal with me. I'm not trying to toot my own horn. My wife was beautiful. My sister was beautiful, but they ain't me. When I get behind anything, I can sell sand to the beach. Okay. But the beautiful thing is, I had a beautiful rapport with people, but I set this thing up so I could get out of there. That was the whole plan was to set up a business where I could, my wife could have a paycheck, my, I could have my sister paycheck, and I could have enough dollars to keep the place sustainable so I could continue to do the other things I was doing in my life. I have been a jack of all trades my entire life. So I didn't want to be stuck in there selling stuff all day. I hated it. Okay. Before the incident, I wasn't even at the store a whole week. They got evidence of this. They got the damn evidence. All this is evidence. They got proof. I wasn't even in Swanton an you know, entire week before this incident happened back on January 17, 2022. I wasn't even, the week prior, I, I took off. I told my sister, your ass is going to work. She, she, she can verify on the stand. No notice. I, I that's how it was. We, you know, we we, we brother and sister. So I no notice. I came in. I said, I ain't doing this today. Me and her was there together. I said, you gonna finish it out. I'll come back and get you. If not, I'll call you an Uber. That night I called her ass an Uber. I wasn't going back out there. You understand me? When I drove home back from swatting every day, understand. I had no desire. And I would hate to have to go back out there unless I had to. But they want to come with this. I planned this out somehow and all this conspiracy scam that still has not been addressed, which bothers me. That's bothering me more than anything. I feel like if I was white, I'm sorry, I hate this. But I feel like if I, if I was white, they somebody would have already called to at least get my side of the story. And like I said, if you don't want to meet my terms, then at least give me your attorney because I want to talk to them. Because whatever his argument is, I don't care what it is. I'm not changing my turn. Because I know when we go to court, especially the Ohio Supreme Court, I can demand more. And I can demand a whole lot more than what you are doing because I have actual evidence of what I'm telling you. I'm not going to waste the court's time. I respect the court way too much than to waste the court's time with something that I'm trying to cook up. No. We're going to talk about the whole damn thing now from beginning. And I'm not paying nobody to talk for me. You're going to talk straight from the horse's mouth. And what you're going to notice about me, the minister, Marquis Kimballs, I don't lie to people. And I'm not going to change my story and, oh, this happened and, no, oh, this happened. And, no, it's been the same exact story since day one, you bastards allowed this and this to go on with it not being addressed. I have evidence of me telling the Swanton Police Department that th we had a guy harassing us every day, happened to be our previous landlord, Mike Wales, every day. My wife, my sister can verify he would come by our store and he'd Park his truck right in the front of our store on the main street. So there ain't no stop sign here. You're supposed to go, buddy. Unless you park in front of our store, what are you doing? He would do this and lay on his home every day. Now, how is this harassment? Because you're putting you're in, in putting fear in my sister and my wife's mind, first of all. They don't know who you big old white country, big bumpkin, like Cat Williams said, he, oh, he looked like a country bumpkin, ugly mother. That dude, that, that's what he would do. Now, he wouldn't do it when I was there. He would do it when they were there. I complained. I complained. I even had a relationship close enough with the so-called mayor. I have the receipts. Not no 
email general talk to my assistant. This guy would watch me personally every day, whether I'm singing karaoke or I was playing instruments. I have evidence of Mayor Neil told so buddy don't lie, where you would be faithfully one of my viewers every time. So we weren't buddies, but he respected me enough, especially after he met my wife and we did the opening with the cutting of the ribbon and it got in the, we did the article in the paper. So understand, I'm not trying to put relationships where they don't belong. I ain't that dude. I'll never need to rock off somebody else's cloud. I ain't that guy. I got enough cloud of my own. Let's talk about me. Forget everybody else. I can offer you all kinds of stuff. You just don't know what, I can, what I'm capable of doing. So the reality of it is I didn't need to create bonds with these people. They happened because of my, 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 my position at McNeil's. Let's just be honest. I just wasn't walking around meeting elite white folks. I didn't have that in my circle, in my life. I'm sorry. They, out there, I was the only one. So there was things that I just took that they made me take without saying you better take it. Let me break it down for some of y'all. Black folks, you gonna get what I'm saying. The court will get what I'm saying, because once again, I ain't paying no damn scam to tell the jury or the judge what happened to me. I will say it. I might not be as elaborate as this guy, but I ain't paying no damn scam to take a third of my dollars to tell put his word on. No, let me tell you, judge. I am a public servant too. You made me sign that I got to uphold this constitution. What I can tell you is I've been violated all through this mug. At least I can tell you that much. The kind of what you I swore to as a notary is the same thing that McNeil swears to, uh, State Farm swears to. So we gonna start right there where I was violated. Marquis Kimball's rights were violated all through this thing. We ain't got to talk about them. I ain't trying to build my name on McNeil. But when I worked out there, it was established real early. Let's get him, let's start him off. First year, we're gonna pay him 60 grand. We're gonna show him how to get to, to make 70. We're gonna show him real fast. They showed me how I could get to 100 grand. What they didn't tell me was what I had to do to get to 100 grand. But when they showed it to me, they just made it part of my job. So we can go to court and they can just say, they want to put me on the stand. Well, Mr. Kimmel, why'd you do it? Because they, you want to pull my pay record? They, there is definite evidence of unfair deceptive practices that went on between African-American car sales and treatment and Caucasian car sales and treatment at this dealership. If you don't believe me, go to their Facebook page right now. The only African-American pictures that you're going to see is a AI generated army black girl on the profile. So you want to say y'all bits? Okay. All right. That's the only one picture you got. Okay, fine. Let's talk about car sales. Every day they're selling cars or every two days. And it's a picture of them and a car salesman. No, nobody black. In the last year, you got two of them. The furthest is all the way back in February, y'all. You know what happened when I stopped working there? What they did have coming out there stopped coming. Because even though it was a difference in the financing, I took care and respected my people. And so it got to the place where they established and told me, whenever there was a black customer on the lot, Make sure you come out and show your face. Ain't that racist as hell, y'all? Listen, forget it. Forget everything else. <laughs> come on, y'all. If y'all somebody don't put a comment, <laughs> look, look. I wasn't. <laughs> look, let me. I was trying to find the birthday card. <laughs> Please, let let me say that again. Y'all say in a meeting to me. The only black African-American employee you have in this entire dealership, you say this, 
if there's a black customer out there, can you know make sure you go out there and show your face? What the hell are you insinuating? But I did that because our people can be standoffish because they don't trust them. I see. I understand now why. See, I was trying to defend this to my grandmother and to my mom, and they'd say, boy, you ain't seeing with your eye open. I used to say, what, grandma, what in the hell? That's when you miss your grandma, when you can remember those things that she said, and you didn't understand it at all, but she gave you a gem that pops up in your life, and you know where it came from. Barb said that to me. That's a gem that I ain't going to even repeat. You know what that means. She was always telling me to keep my eye open. These people are, they get paid off of what you, how you perform. Don't you see the, the difference in how they treat you when the minute you don't give them what they want to see? Let me and my wife getting into arguing and having a bad month. I don't give a damn about them numbers out there. And it would show in my performance every month. And they would hold that over my head, y'all. Hold it over my head. Well, what you think I'm going to do when I'm thinking about my home and my kids and I got to pay this person, I got to pay that person. Our mortgage payment was one of their customers. I mean, my whole life was tied up out there. And so they made me believe that the things they were doing was not racist. And like I said, this complaint I have against them today is not because of those things. I'm going to explain to y'all exactly how I'm going to justify it to the courts. And it makes all the sense in the world. It's not what I'm demanding and expecting from them is not because of these things, because I would have legally should have done something back then. There's a thing called statute of limitations. You cannot go back that far on a former employer with some stuff. That, oh, yeah, I'm, hurt. No, I'm not trying to do that. I would have been came and busted their ass. That's what they need to understand. It ain't that. So don't give me that. I'm pulling the race car because that's what they're going to try to say, y'all. No. If it was that, I would have had y'all asses the minute I walked out of there when y'all changed my pay without me knowing. Remember that? I got evidence of that too. I mean, come on. So, no, it ain't the race card. I got sick of the bullshit and I left. But the reality of it is, it's not why I'm coming after them now. If you call me impersonating the same police department who neglected to show up at my business when the alarms went off due to a, a disturbance break-in. They knew this. The alarm company told them because as soon as the alarm strip, it knows if it's not disarmed that this is a disturbance. Something's wrong here. Even if it was an animal, something's wrong. Somehow my cameras and everything is cut, y'all. They ain't got no evidence of it. No evidence. When I go to bed at night, this is what I want you to understand. When my sister left that store or my wife left that store, I didn't even want to log into the damn store until it's time to go in. Why would I? Why? The alarm going to go off if something's wrong. At nine, it's like my sister got off at six. At nine o'clock, I, I logged out of that stupid thing. I don't even care about the store then. Because I know I have all things set up like a business owner should. I'm set up just like all every other business out here. Why? I shouldn't have no problems. I got insurance. We got security. Why I got to come home and worry about this? That's what I got that in place for. I'm, I'm trying to be a real owner. So I thought somehow I can't access this stuff because I didn't pay for the monthly thing through Ring. But there's no way. Everything's cut. When we get there, I get there at 8, like 8.15 or so. I pull up. The cops are already, they done ran through and did their thing. According to them, allegedly, they turned off the water. But this is what they did in the last time. They tried to put this water stuff, twist it and turn it, and put it off as if we somehow, listen to this scam. The attorney even tried to say, his last things were to me were, you know, uh, yeah, I hope they don't try to proceed after you and uh, criminally. I said, I hope they do. Oh, I hope they do. See, what you don't understand, buddy, is I don't live a life trying to be a criminal. I've lived an entire 40 years staying out of that way, trying to do right, staying right with my wife, raising kids, even though I didn't like her at times and she ain't like me at times. I, 20 years, okay? I went through school. I did the right thing. I went to work and I paid my way. I didn't run. I did the right thing. Don't start 
telling me you're going to give me some charges and I'm not going to fight my way through this. Nobody. See, what you can't do to me, you can't put something on me that I ain't never done. Let's go look at my record. I, I registered minister with the state of Ohio. They don't just let you do that. You, you got to go through something. They, they, all this runs through the uh, uh, Ohio uh, Attorney General. You can't just sign up. You can't. That's what makes half these preachers scams. If they're not listed with the state of Ohio, then you have a scam playing with you. Because the state is what says you are legitimately recognized as a member of clergy. Marquise Kimball is registered. Marquise Kimball is also registered with the state of, of Lucas County, uh, 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 Stable Ohio, same state that I was born and raised in, as a notary commissioned till 2029 and have been a notary for over seven years in my life. Seven plus years. Seven plus years. No ever instances. They said when they looked at my driving record, they couldn't believe how fast the results came back. They said my driving record was completely clean. My background was clean. Because they make you do all the big background check when you go talk about you going to fish these documents. Stay ain't just letting everybody do that. They said before I got home the next the, that same day, I had cleared the whole background and everything that they said that it had never happened that fast before. That's the kind of person I've lived my life doing. So State Farm, bring it. If you want to now try to come to court and try to find a way to come up with some lie to try to say that me and my sister had something to do with this, you still want to pull that garbage. I want you to do it because now I'm going to get you criminally. And boy, I'm going to stick it as much as I can because you are really messing with my freedom now. You're trying to make me a criminal. And you don't get to do that to somebody who has never been no criminal and ain't trying to be. I ain't trying to be no damn criminal. I don't even get stuff from Renner Center. I hate them bastards. They used to come in our house taking stuff out whenever they felt like. I don't care what they say. It wasn't always us. It wasn't always us. And then they say what they want to say. I made arrangements, I thought. But see, that's what they do to us. Oh, you get this sound system and here, man, it's only going to cost you $32 a week. And you think you can do that and you can. And I've been through those stages. I've been through those trenches. So now I get to the place where I think I've got the same respect as everybody else. And this gets done to me in the public. And the mayor won't even stand up and say, no, this is wrong. I don't give a damn if the city got to cut the check. If McNeil's got to cut the check, if they all got to get together and say it's wrong just because it was our favorite boy at one point, call it what it is. Show me somebody else you treated that way. Call it what you called me. Call it the token. Take care of the token. Say that. Just make it go away. You need to fix this. You sat back and I did everything I was required to do or you would not have allowed me to do, open my business. Y'all know what y'all took me through. We got to prove that. I got, man, see, people don't understand. I wasn't just starting up something like I had never ran. A, or, or Before this was set up, it was set up right. It was a corporation. It wasn't just me coming out here and putting somebody to work. This is set up so if I die today, my wife has this forever. My kids, my grandkids, the scripture says, a blessed man is not a man that puts up for his kids, but his children's children. So you sorry-ass grandparents out there thinking you're blessed walking up in church dancing every week, but you ain't said nothing or seen your grandkids in years. You are not blessed. You think you are. You don't even think about them. It's not about money. See, let me fix this and hip y'all like a real preacher should be telling you on Sunday. I ain't asking for no offer. Preacher, that's what it really is. Give them some wisdom. Give them some do's and some don'ts. And what I can hear Barb saying do right now, don't take your foot off the pedal, son. You tried to do everything right for them. You did everything that you that they asked you to do. Everything to one year and even in the car show. We had an annual car show one year. They tried up and down to get me to agree to get in the damn water dunk tank. And I stood to my ground. No, I don't give a damn how much money you're giving me. You never gave me nothing that said I'm getting paid to come out here and let somebody play and like I'm some kind of damn instrument and try to dump me in some water. No, no, no. It's like it's a fun game. Y'all do that. 
Let me be Marquise Kimball that I've always been. And they did. They let me wear my clothes. You can go get all this evidence. Go, go back on my page. I was the guy. You didn't buy a car unless you sat down in my office and signed the papers, whether it was new or used. They, got, they hated when I took time off. They didn't want nobody else touching cars besides me. I became the top finance manager out of the finance group every other month. If not, I won the gift card. This is the guy I was. I resigned, y'all. They didn't just fire me. So what would make a guy like that just say, I'm sick of this shit? What, what, tell me. They gave me whatever I wanted. I can't sit here and make up and say they mistreated me. No, here's where they broke the law and I justified it. It was not that they mistreated me and we gonna go back to the 60s with this nigger. No, it wasn't that. It was, we're gonna pay you enough to make it hush hush and okay to get our little slides in and you're going to take it and we're going to make you believe and you're going to understand it and it's not really racist so it, it, th those little times became often often times then it became why do you wonder why i don't want to go out with y'all y'all wonder why i don't answer the phone they became a big thing you don't call marquis they ain't gonna show up why you think i really want to be out with y'all because I know somewhere in this cesspool, I'm going to have to tolerate something being said that's going to be derogatory towards my race. I didn't, Do I got to really prove I tolerated that for seven years out there making a hundred grand a year? Y'all think they just gave that to anybody? Do y'all really think that they just picked one out of the bunch and said, here's a hundred grand a year. Here you go. We want to change your life. And here, we want to give your wife a nice car. We want to send you on cruise. You really think that happened? Show me that. Because I tell you what, I had some successful people in my family, but none of them were able to do the things I did as early as I did in my life. And now I've got to fight to keep it all. And nobody stood in my, my defense, not even my family. People that know me, know me, and know my character. You would think somebody would, we gave away a hundred book bags to the community for back to school that I paid for out of my pocket. Got the, got the receipts. Evidence of this going on. It was so many book bags in the store that the customers was like, well, we don't really need them. The ones took them that need them. The ones that didn't, they, we still had a bunch left. I called the church in Toledo and said, here, come get them. Here, come get them. Nothing wrong with them. They're brand new. Stocked up. I paid for it out of my own pocket to give back to the community without asking for things in return, Christmas baskets, things we were doing for the community. And they did not one person in that same community stand up and say, there's no way, because I will guarantee you, if I had the defense that I should have had from this, this community, I wouldn't have been fighting this long. They would have already made this right. My complaint went as far as the mayor. So I get to the story, y'all. I done told y'all all my bad, but let me get to the story and the meat of all of this because I want you to understand my story is never going to change. So they can pull whatever they want. And I have high respect for the court. So I'm not playing with the court. And so the reality of it is you can dance with me all you want with this judge. That judge is going to have high respect for me because I know how to respect a judge. And that's what they want to see. And they really respect the guy that has respected the law and in my complaint to them i gave them every spot that they broke and violated so ain't no we you want to say i made up the law now no can't say that so guys i want you to understand you ain't dealing with no fool i showed up at this store they turned the lights off how do i know this because every time i walked into that building no matter when i got there i turned on lights as soon as I got there, every light, habit, every day. So same thing happened when I got there. Wondering, okay, why are all these cops here? It's been an apparent break-in, and why am I still pulling up to a dark-ass store on Main Street? Couldn't believe it, y'all. It's light outside. I still didn't believe it. Let me explain to you why it happened this way. As I turn on the lights, I see the word nigger. 
I'm all, I'm in tears, y'all. I'm still distraught because of what I'm seeing here, and nobody can give me any answers of what the hell just went down. When I see these word this word nigger on the wall, I say, officer, did you did you see this? Yeah, we saw it. So how'd you see it if it was dark in here? How in the hell did you even see it? If did you shine your flash a light cop up here and flash on there or did you turn on the light and say oh no let's turn that off because if, 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 if this comes out we'll say he did that i don't know what to believe because i don't trust you all it you took you an hour to get here it could be any of the above stories but none of this was looked at at all by state farm so this goes on the officer then says mr kimball it's standard procedure. Y'all follow me now, because I just tell me if I, I don't know this stuff. I stay out the law, so I just I'm trying to respect you and do whatever you tell me. I don't know what should have happened or shouldn't have happened. I'm just telling you what the facts are, okay? This fake ass what Billy Bob cop comes up with some story of why he needed to perform a fingerprint dusting kit on me right now on the spot. Standard procedure. I Okay, officer, here. Here. You're not going to find anything. Here. And this bastard was literally fingerprinting me as I'm the person. You're not fingerprinting me as you're trying to help me. You're trying to, you're, you're trying to find a way to find my fingerprints here. And you can't, because I have not been here for a week. Do y'all see the puzzle, y'all? Come on, man. This is the tr truth. You can't find them. So you pour the same scam on my sister, and you're going to get her fingerprints on the stuff, because she was working the machine. They came up with, why was her hands on both machines? Because if she was the only employee there, I kept dollars in this register and this register. And my wife and my sister knew how I did business, how I ran business. It was too much money in this register. Take it out, put something in here, make sure we got change. Donna, don't let me come in here and have to worry about it. They did that. So, yes, it's going to have her hands on this. It's going to have her hands on this. It's cameras. What do you mean? They were trying to say, trying to come up with their story of why our handprints would have been on this stuff. Although she was the employee the day before. You're trying to cover up why you neglected to show up when you were notified at 645. That's what the truth is, Officer Bobby. You're trying to come up with a reason to justify why every other business is down here and we light up the whole block and y'all went to the wrong business, the wrong address, our old address which happened to be two minutes across the railroad tracks. So even if you went there, you see it's closed, it's the wrong place. You look over the street, you can still see us by light and they still showed up an hour late, over an hour. Somehow, State Farm, seven days after all of this crap went on, they launched an investigation on me. One of the officers of the HCV Distribution Corporation, y'all. This corporation is not made up of just me. It's made up and set up like it's supposed to be with the state of Ohio. I'm not stupid. I know how to do this stuff. That's why people hire me to do it for them. They can trust what I tell them they got to do. It might hurt my thing, but don't sit and argue with me. You want to be able to use what I can use right now. You better pay me for my knowledge. The reason I'm taking them to court is because they did not follow due process. Period. Evidence of it. If they did, then why didn't any of my other partners get a phone call if we were being investigated? No, you based your whole denial on our claim on Mark East Kimball personal finances so you could justify why all this racist bullshit went on. And no, man, I shouldn't have even had to fight this long. The mayor should have stood up in my honor. You know why? Because I told him what his racist ass cops did to me. Because it don't stop there, y'all. It don't stop there. After I go through this fingerprint scam, the next thing is, can you come on down to the station and so you can give us a statement? My thing is, okay, I'll follow this, but I'm thinking like, it don't make no sense. 
why wouldn't I do a, why can't you get a statement right here? You're right here thinking my finger. What makes it? Okay, I'm trying to comply with you. My issue's not with you at this point. I know as a business owner that what the steps need to be taken. I've done the first step by, I didn't even do any of it. I didn't, the, my alarm company did the first step by alerting you. You're only involved because of them. No way in the world should I have been a, a, a suspect and treated as such out the gate when I showed up to this ridiculous mess. None of that's looked at. Can you go on down for a statement? Stations right here. Why not, Officer Bobby? I'm just making up an alias. I don't even know the guy's name, but listen, this is public record. Y'all gonna look up the police record. I'll, I'll go back on my. I'll get it to you. I'll email you. Give me your email. I'll send you it all. You can read it all. This all is published. I'm taking you step by step, slow by slow, every day, so I don't miss no point, and I make sure everybody in the public eye sees that I have not changed my story ever, because that's what they pull in court. Well, you said this back here. No, no, the state farm said that then. Then they said this. Don't you see that, jury? I don't need no damn attorney. Jury, let me talk to y'all. Do you see we're right here? They said this, and then they said this, and then it. I'm taking y'all step by step. So come to the police station, you and your sister. We just want to get a statement. I tell my sister, look, okay, fine. She's not there the day he asked this stuff. He wants a statement from her, not me. So but she don't have a car. See, her ex-boyfriend stole her truck. And she filed the police report with the see, uh, 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 Lucas County City of Toledo records. The guy took off and never to be seen again. Guess what was on her keys of that truck? Keys to my store. So he was a person that I gave to them that could have been a suspect. Followed up and found they never even did anything on that guy. I turned him in. They told me, could it be anybody you know? I gave them two people that I had issues with or could have had issues with. That guy hated me because I made it known if I see you, I'm going to damn near kill you because what you did to my sister. He wasn't trying to see me. So if anybody was coming from me, it would have been him. Either that dude or Mike Wells. I told the police this. But the statement that we had to give turned into, we're going to separate y'all. And what we're going to do is we're going to get her, try to get her to implicate you did it and try to get you to implicate she did it. I saw right through it. He was mad as hell because I'm, I'm mad. I'm like, I'm pissed now. Like, do you think you're talking to some Ray Ray, bro? Do I have to really pull my records? I got pissed off at him. He was done with me very soon. They kept Jackie back there in the room trying to find a way to get her to make me out to be the criminal. Y'all, we ain't even got to nothing about State Farm yet. This is why the mayor is mentioned. Because after all of this ridiculous behavior, I contacted him on Facebook by instant messenger, not no email my assistant, like most people. Most people ain't just messaging the mayor. That's what I could do to the guy. I messaged, long paragraph, got the evidence, spelling out what his racist ass cops did to me and my sister and how I was so upset. Looking back on it today, I guess what I failed to realize then was his compassion then was only to prevent me from making this public because he got real nice with me. Oh, I'm so sorry this happened. Oh, 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 I do hope you can get through this and get your business back open. Oh, oh, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna get me some sleep tonight and then I'm gonna pay special attention to your situation and I'm gonna get another uh, law enforcement agency uh, involved to uh, investigate this case. Basically, so I can don't go out here and tell this to, to the public about my cops. I'll just let somebody else look in. That's what he was saying in so many words, as professional and nice as he could, because he knows what he's dealing with here. I'm not trying to screw you, guy. I'm trying to tell you that these bastards mistreated me, and I'm not even trying to mention it to the public. I'm trying to tell you. Get these fucking 
racist man. This is what they did to me. I can really throw your ass under the. I like you, mayor. You like me. Apparently, do I want to speak? That's what I'm trying to tell him, y'all. He tells me this. It's on record. And you know what the state, the uh, Swanton Police Department didn't do? They immediately dropped the investigation as soon as they're notified that I have an attorney. What? Okay, if you dropped it, well, Mr. Mayor, where's the where, where's the evidence of this other agency? Don't tell me on where. Don't. We're going to court. If I got to call your name, I will. Where's the evidence on paper of the documents that prove that you did what you said with this other agency? Where is that? It doesn't exist. It never happened. They dropped the entire investigation. You know why they dropped it? Because my agent made them believe that this is a case of insurance fraud. Implicating I did this. Why would they continue the And meanwhile, nobody in the whole city is truly investigated by them. But they, they put on documents that they'd had a full investigation and at the determination of their base investigation, full investigation, they've determined that they cannot cover the claim. This time they say it's because I misrepresented my financial picture, essentially. They called in some other department. Whoever they want to call, it doesn't matter. You should have been looking at everybody's picture at that point. And now you can pull it now, but everybody's picture has changed. And there was a whole different ball game with the CBD industry then than it is now. So you are still going to lose. I don't care how you want to slice the pie. They based everything off me, and I have that record too. Everything was based off Marquis Kimball, completely ignoring every, everything else. You think I did all this by myself, huh? I had some, I had all the money to do just all, I had a record of uh, invoices that are still owed thousands of dollars in the corporation's name right now. One of the invoices is over $200,000, y'all. It was, it was e-liquid and TVs on the wall, y'all. All of that was stolen while we were insured under the Swanton Police Department's watch. And the mayor who is supposed to be the leader of the town Instead of defending my honor and figuring out how to help this fellow business, you stuck your hands off of it because everybody stopped talking to me one time. All the business owners. At one point, I'm the guy everybody know. At one point, they start unfriending me on Facebook. Well, why is this? Somebody said, don't talk to him anymore. Don't deal with him. This might be some insurance fraud. You might be getting arrested. This is what they doing in the town, y'all. This destroying my profession. I worked out here almost damn now, this point, damn near 10 years building this name and corporation and store in a, they secretly destroying me throughout the town. And then somehow our building owner knows that our insurance claim is denied before I know. But you're gonna tell me you didn't disclose this State Farm? Come on. You know, you want that evidence? Because I got that too. I'm going back and forth with her. I'm mad. I can't believe she's telling me information about my claim that she should not know. I have the evidence of this. So somebody had to do it at State Farm. They passed the buck this entire time. I even got the recorded conversation when we when they had we had to do this dispositions or whatever. And they, they turning red and can't even fumbling and jumbling over everything they're saying because they can't even they trying to form, cover their words. They were talking back and forth. My the lady I got the building from and my personal agent. He telling her stuff that he getting through customer service. She had the knowledge that we were not going to get paid. She locked the doors on her and told us in order for us to get our stuff back, I had to sign off the building, 1,000% illegal. What do you mean? I said, hell no. Fight me, go do what you need to do. And I made her go through court. Well, she never gave us our stuff that entire time. What she just does is dumb as hell. She should be the dumbest ass. She gets on Facebook, not her, of course. She hires some hauling company. He's stupid as hell because he jumps on Facebook and records himself in our building, throwing away stuff, 
taking what he wanted. She had already picked through what she wanted. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, Marquise Kimball gets a whole truck that gets dropped off at his house with nothing but garbage. Our furniture, our TVs, our securities, all of it is gone. And State Farm don't want to cover the tab on none of that. Okay, well, State Farm, you don't want to do it? Then, Mr. Mayor, where were you at? Oh, you ain't in it then? Let's get to McNeil. Let's get back over to them. Again, I tolerated the racist bullshit for years, and I never was going to talk about it. They decided to call me this past year, February 2024, this past year, talking about the Swanton Police Department. Are you fucking serious? So, okay. Let's separate everything else. If they can do that, then there should, there's no reason in the hell that State Farm can give me of why they should not have been questioned when seven years of my entire life was working at that damn dealership. Everybody at that dealership should have been questioned. If you claim you pulled this full investigation on Marquise Kimball, which you should not have done anyway, but if you were going to do this, this should not be going on. And you tell me that somebody out here is not involved in any of this. Okay, well, McNeil, you're not involved. Well, then you shouldn't have called me acting like the cops. So now you just brought yourself in this as a suspect. I have every right to call you as a person as of interest because how do you get to act like the same racist bastards that did all these things to me? I don't, it don't, it's not, it don't add up for me. It don't add up for me. And I'm not stupid. So sorry, McNeil. You, you're involved. You want out of it? Pay your way out. Somebody needs to pay the check. Somebody needs to pay the toll. I've given you the reasons why everybody in this circle dropped the ball. And then let's not get to State Farm's attorney saying that I showed up to a court appearance procedure wearing a suit with a loud tie. Was very bad, braggadocious with a bunch of jewelry on. Guys, I have the same amount of jewelry on that I currently have on right now. Let me break it down for y'all because I'm sure they can pull the record. As they said, everything in there was on the record. They was doing everything to try to pull the nigga them out of me. They was trying to piss me off on every level and they were so upset. It took nine, a nine hour deposition after Lonnie Johnson had already questioned me on the phone for six hours on my birthday. I'm trying to comply with all of this. And they want me to come to a room to, for a recorded procedure. I show up professional, y'all. Y'all think I came in there looking like GQ? I would have never made it out at McNeil's. They let me get away with some stuff, but I wasn't allowed to come out there with no damn pink suit on. Try to, I would have never done the Bishop bling bling out there. I know how to act. Y'all, I was professional as they come. The guy put on public documents that I showed up wearing a blue suit with a loud tie with a bunch of jewelry on and was very braggadocious. And State Farm doesn't even acknowledge any of this. And they still can't explain. If we go to any jury, explain to me how my appearance had anything to do at all with the determination of this case of, of coverage. What the It tells me what your motive was. You want to line it all up and make it look all good. So if I'm involved with it, let me make sure I button this up as much as I can and put my sauce on this. So if I say that, and they've already said this, oh, there's our picture. He's either a scamified preacher, he's a scamified drug dealer. Let's put this on him without telling him we're putting it on him so that we can charge him later with it if he tries to talk about it. I saw all through everything that they was trying to do. And I stopped them every time. Like, no, I'm not dumb. They tried to get me to come back to the police station to report the second robbery at nighttime. Told me they can't take my report over the phone. They just couldn't do it. I'm distraught uh, the second time because I couldn't believe this stuff happened. I'm trying to get the hell out of here. I don't want nothing to happen to me. When this happened, I'm like, Ebony, let's go. We got the mail and we I'm shooting my ass back. Let me get out of this town as fast as possible because I don't even know what's going on right now. At this time, I was not carrying. Even though I had a license to carry, I did not have my gun that day. So when I pulled out there, like it was like, let me get my mail and go. 
when I came to get my mail, everything in the store is gone. So I'm on the phone on the way back with the police. Listen, this is Mr. Kimball. I don't know what the hell is going on in the town of Swanton. But everybody in this town knows exactly what, if nothing else, what this store looked like after the first break-in. It was all over the news in Swanton later that day. Somebody took everything that was even left in there. I'm trying to report this. Yeah, well, we're going to need you to come on back up here. Right, do you think I, my name is Boo Boo the Fool and I just woke up yesterday so I won't show up tomorrow? And you Or you beat me down and try to put me in cuffs and say I did something to you? No, I'm not falling for that fool. I've never been back like this since. Because you're playing with my life now. And when I was trying to be honest, somehow it got back to McNeil's that I may be having a case against the police and they told me if that is the case, I don't know who told them. They never told me who told them. They said they heard through the grapevine. See, this is how tight-knit this town is. They heard through the grapevine that you might be proceeding a case against the police. At this time, I wasn't. I truly wasn't. I wasn't even thinking about them. At this point, I'm just kind of honestly thinking State Farm's going to just pay me a check, like every other business in America. I had no idea that this entire time, everybody's making me a criminal, and I don't know it. This is why everybody's looking weird with me. Everybody's acting weird with me. The salesman acting weird. Everybody starts acting weird with me throughout this whole town. And I don't even know why. It's because they're talking about me as implicating me as being responsible for this crime. I'm trying to figure out how to make me responsible. Y'all, this went on and it went on. And my entire time, I was just expecting State Farm to get me back on my feet so I could open my store back up. I wasn't trying to make it off y'all check. You think y'all check was going to make my life? Go look back over my life. Go look at the life I made. And I ain't make it off of y'all. I made 60 grand in one CBD deal when I went to Denver. That bought me some of the products on my shelf. So don't play with me because you're mad that that 60 grand, according to retail numbers, could turn into, at that time, almost 200 grand. Don't get mad at me because of the profit margins. Don't get mad at me because of that. You're mad at me because of that, right? So you're going to say, oh, could, no way he could have been doing that. And if he was doing that, why he ain't paying no taxes? Because it wasn't even a year before we was broken into and you bastards never took care of the toll. So why would I? I'm up an ass river with taxes now. Yes. Who's paying that bill? My corporation is mud. Huh? Google us. Our credit, our credit is destroyed. And so is thousands of other people's because they got everything out of my office too, which contained people's social security numbers, their first birthdays, because I am a credit expert. Why wouldn't I have tax people, had tax clients in my office, stuff in file cabinets, like a real office? Take it. All of it. So all these personal information is out there. People calling me mad. Threatening my life. I've had to change my number. And they're going to tell me what they don't want to take care of. I'm not saying McNeil's did it. I'm not saying the mayor did it. I'm not saying the police did it. I'm not saying State Farm did it. What I am saying is, is I'm the only common denominator. And I was mistreated throughout this whole entire community, including the court system. Because somehow, some way, we never got our day in court. But the day before court, their attorney, my attorney, and the judge go into the courtroom, but nobody goes in there representing me. Me and my buddy st sit outside. We're told to sit at a table. They all go in the courtroom together. They in there 45 minutes to an hour. Come out laughing, giggling. And then the day before I'm supposed to appear at court, the scamified attorney I had comes up with this we're going to have to go ahead and drop the case because we don't drop the case. You're going to lose bad faith and you're going to lose this and you're going to lose that. So you're going to have to get it all refiled. Okay, so if you're going to refile it, okay, no big, big deal. I'm thinking of... Didn't tell me that that would be the last conversation I'd have with him. He has not contacted me since, y'all. Not once. Not even to help me find another attorney after I begged him. You ain't going to have... You ain't going to even... You know this is bull what you're telling me. Clearly something happened on his end. Now, you want to know where everybody close to me thinks happened? He was paid off. 
because he was the one that found all of these other charges. In the beginning, all I wanted them to do was cover the story and get me back open. He found defamation of character. He found bad faith. He found breach of contract. And they've drugged us on for two years to where they've now taken me to the point where I am now going to press charges on them for racial discrimination and discriminatory acts and unfair deceptive practices against a fellow African-American business owner, number one, a public servant, notary, and minister. And you destroyed my entire financial life. They're threatening to take my home that I worked hard for, for my family. They've taken me through financial hell. And you think I'm just going to take the foot off the pedal? No. Somebody needs to be held accountable and needs to make Mr. Kimball whole. And everybody knows what makes Mr. Kimball whole. And I'm not a dummy and I'm not going to disclose that. So I know some of y'all been watching like, well, how much you had? I ain't disclosing that. They know. You better believe they know. It was emailed to them on the 17th, faxed to them and emailed. They've got a copy of every complaint that has been filed against them, both State Farm and McNeil's, each time. Because I've instructed my representatives, anytime we're going to file a complaint, make sure you copy them. They need to know about it. Because I don't want them to pull, oh, we didn't know he was. No, I want everything time stamped. This date, we made this complaint and we let them know. This date, we made this complaint and we let them know. This date, we made this complaint, we let them know. And guess what? When we let them know, we also told the people we complained to, we also gave them a copy of what we request from them. So don't try to, oh, we tried some scam. No, everybody in the circle, everybody outside the circle, anyone you want to pull in knows what I request. So if you want your... Attorney to get on the phone with me, fine. Get him on the phone. Well, man up and get him on the phone because I'm ready. My number's not going to change. You can't sweet talk me no matter what. You've taken me through the worst. You think you're going to be able to sweet talk me out of this? No. I can prove every single thing that I can claim, including how your story completely changed from the actual facts of the story. That story scam that they turned into the courts, it has is not even half of what really happened in this entire situation. Because we were told to be quiet. Don't talk to the news. Don't put it on. My kids were looking at me like I was crazy. You ain't going to tell the news? You ain't going to. Because the attorney said, just Mr. Kimball, don't. Just go through the investigation. Don't do that. You'll open up another can of worms and you might end up losing the case. This is what the attorney told us and representatives of mine. So we didn't want to rock the boat. That's why we never told anybody about this crime that happened in this town with these folks. Never said anything. Followed their instructions to the T. And we go an entire year after they kept postponing and prolonging and postponing and prolonging. I signed over the building trying to follow what they said. She agreed to disclose who told her all this information at State Farm that shouldn't have and never disclosed it, backed out of it, never kept up her end of the bargain. But she got her building back and sold it. And this is all tracked. We have all the evidence. It was never addressed. So I'm done with the time frame. Their time clock is ticking. And as soon as I hear back from the Ohio Supreme Court, I'm getting this case heard in front of them. We're not going to play your hunky-dory Fulton County court games. McNeil's, you're up a shit river because I want the jury of my peers and I want it fair. And I don't got time to be looking for somebody to only, that, that's your uncle's buddy and your brother's brother and your brother's nun. And everybody knows somebody So we're going to do this to the court and may get it so this Negro can't do none of that. No, 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 buddy. I want the highest court, respected court in the land the Honorable Justice of the Ohio Supreme Court to hear what went down here. I don't care if the judge that was on the case has to be investigated, the attorneys, state arms attorneys, I don't care who you want to be. You have, after you took me through this type of investigation, bring them. Please, sick them on them now. Everybody know Mark this demo store. I'm an open book. If you wanted me, you would have been got me. So stop it. They 
wrongfully treated me, pushed me out of that community and stole my business from me. And now instead of manning up and taking care of this and making me whole, they're trying to put a number. They tried to put a number on the value of what they took from me. Now there's no way you can put a number on what you take, took from me because you destroyed my entire professional image. It's gone. I can never make the money I made before. You took all my customer base because our customers are the customers that live right in Swami. So you take, you took my income, you took my corporation, you destroyed my partners, their, their financial uh, picture has been destroyed. Thousands, if not thousands of customers, personal information you've breached. I could go after her for that, but no, that's the arms problem. Because we had in the policy coverage of cyber products and all that stuff. We were covered while you were investigating me. I wasn't even in the store at this point. No reason. We were closed because we were waiting for you to pay the check so we can get back open. Everybody drive by here. It was, it was, somehow, we get robbed again and nobody has any evidence of this. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, in case McNeil's ever wants to try to tell me that they were never racist like they always like to say, you know, they, they, uh, whenever somebody say they ain't racist, they are. They're racist as hell. Believe them. Like Maya Angelou said, when a person show you who they are, believe them the first time. The birthday card they gave me years ago, that you might think this ain't racist until you understand the dynamics of this card. Now, according to my dad, today you ain't going to be able to find no card like this. This looks like it to him. This had to be specially ordered. I don't know if that's true or not. I don't know. That's not the point. Here's the problem. It's a little black boy on the front of a card, in front of a Chevy car, which is, you might even say, hey, that's cute. No problem. It's a problem because there was no other black person working there besides me. And everybody that signed the damn card was Caucasian. And you want to sit here and tell me that I didn't put up with the jokes and the crap and the boo so I could live comfortable? Listen, they opened this can of worms. If I was going to pull the race card and try to pull this on them, I would not have waited till 2024 to do it. I'm not no damn idiot. And I did not ever need them to make it or I would have never quit. They opened and reset the statute of limitations on this crap when they called me acting like the cops and trying to say, we don't know what happened in your store. Nobody. Now you've brought yourself into this. So now that you're in this, somebody out of this circle got to figure out what happened and give me a more logical excuse than why we are not going to take care of you, Mr. Kimball. Although we can all prove without a shadow of a doubt that you nor anybody else that is connected to you was here during this time. We dropped the ball. What makes you happy, Mr. Kimball? That's what should have been happening. I should have got a phone call from the mayor direct. Everybody stopped talking to me. And I've had to complain and complain and complain and sound the alarm and sound the alarm and sound the alarm and ain't nothing happened. And at once I was supposed to be the town's favorite boy. Oh, you didn't like me when I had the CBD store? You were sure liking me when you had to buy a car because you could not get a car without talking to me. So at one point you were forced to like me. And this is how it ends with no resolution and no consequences. And I'm not supposed to have no complaints. As I'm seeing my entire life being turned upside down with no consequences or repercussions to nobody at all. How long you want me to be quiet? Because I've been quiet for two years. I'm done being quiet. You need to fix this situation, not for me, but for my family. If you really gave a damn about the Kimballs, like y'all all claim you did at one one point, make make me whole. Y'all all got the y'all got the, the, the know-how, y'all got the the the, the sources. I've explained to you what has happened to me and why I've requested what I've requested. And I spelt it out. My entire life is destroyed. And I can't even finance a car right now. And I'm the credit, credit guy. Credit guru can tell you how to get an 800 credit score. Never had to buy my house on FHA because I got it conventional. What does that mean? They gave me out 2.7 on the, on the dang on term, 15 year term. And I know credit. My credit and everything has been destroyed. They even put in the documents that I had good credit when they were investigating me. Their attorney did. He put it in the doc. I got the con. I got it. So it wouldn't have been a motive for me with bad credit to come up with an insurance scam because when they asked him how was his credit, he put in the documents I had good credit. And you expect me to have that same rating today? 
No, buddy. No, sir. Everything is happening in my life. Volcanoes and fires I need to put out. And y'all did me wrong. And if you just want to continue to insult me and just say you're just not going to honor my request, then when we get to court, buddy, mm, I can't wait for discovery. Because you ain't hiding none of that. They don't ask for records and they get to go back all them years that I worked there. And I can tell you right now, some of them were so stupid that they text me the insulting remarks, the, the uh, Afro Sheen jokes, the Harami. They text it to me. If I don't got the record, let's go get your phone records. And they will do that once you're in a court and they call what's called court discovery. So if McNeil's wants to go there and just try to, to, to try to fight their lie in the end, they're going to look as racist, just as like the racist bastards they look right now. They're going to look the same in the end. And then it'll be a jury that determines how much those damages will be. And if those damages, they could be 50 million, 100 million, you could put your business out of uh, close your business for what you're really trying to get into fire with me on. You brought yourself into this. If you don't want to be the person, then talk to these people. You go, cool. y'all all know each other. Somebody should have some compassion enough to say, we, we, we dropped the ball. City of Swanton, we dropped the ball. Somebody, we dropped the ball. It was not Mr. Kimball's fault at all. And it's entirely been way too long since we have made this thing home. That's what should have happened. No, I got to take y'all to Ohio Supreme Court. So Mayor Neil Tope, get ready because you're going to be listed too, buddy. And so is your police department. I want this as far, I want it in the paper. Matter of fact, I want it national. I want to tell every African-American that I come in contact with, stay away from that area. Don't go to Swanton for shit. Don't you go out there for nothing at all. I said it. They did not treat me well. And if they did, where's the evidence of it? They don't even have evidence of the allegations that they claim. There's a video, some dumbass eight second video that they try to say is my, they try to put the crime on my sister in their video. This is what the video shows. A shadow, some shadow walks past the store. Neither one of me or my sister are dark enough to be a shadow, but let's, there's the first racist bullshit. That's what we let slide. Then it was, she had some way and got off and she set trip the alarm. When my sister left the store, it's evidence of when her and I talked because I set the alarm from my phone. That's how it worked every day, whether my wife worked or my sister worked. You get off work, you let me know, boom, I'm going to set the alarm as soon as you leave. Boom, boom, boom. Jackie left. It was 6.05. I set the alarm. The store was armed at 6.09. She was already in the car by 6.13. I know my sister. We talked by the time she got home. These bastards come up with this video that they try to say was my sister and she's involved. And the time she is leaving the store, it's a train that comes through every day, three times a day, running in front of the store. Yet they're saying she did this and we better not say anything or we're going to risk being charged with a crime. That's what the attorney told us. To try to scare me into not saying anything. I told him, I said, I hope to goodness State Farm tries that one. Then I'm going to pull every preacher I know. Now I'm going to make it real bad for you, State Farm. You don't want that. Don't start trying to make me a criminal. Y'all drop the ball. And since you don't want to pay it, uh, 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 stroke the check, State Farm, well, Mayor Neil Tope, I know the city got enough uh, sources to take care of this and make me whole. I ain't got to come back to your town. I don't want to come back to that racist town anyway. But I should be able to have enough sources to start my business over again. And I cannot start like I started then because that industry has changed. So guess what? It's now a THC friendly uh, state. So those dollars change. You have the sources. You don't want to take care of it, Mr. Mayor. And then, uh, McNeil, John LaRich, you're getting called into this. Why? Because you're the dealer principal. I'm smart. I know what this how this works. You own majority of McNeil Chevrolet. So guess what? You can stroke the check. You don't want to do it? Well, you, John, and Jason, y'all, you know, we dropped the ball, man. You, you know, we we did let this guy get away. But he got the evidence. You do have, you do have. Here. That's where I'm at. And that's the same thing I'm going to tell the most highest honorable, respectful court of the land. 
the Ohio State Supreme Court because I don't trust nobody in Fulton County. I don't even trust attorneys no more. They put a bad, sour taste in my mouth. And the only way that I will ever trust them again is when they call me saying, hey, what's your bank account information? We need to make this right. That's not what, what we're saying. I'll see you in court. And you defend to the jury why you let this stuff go on. Why you said this, Mr. Mayor, and you didn't do this. And then you elected public office as a public servant. That's what's on your website. You really signed up for the same oath that I did to protect and uphold the United States and the our state constitution. My, my oath is right here hanging on the wall, the same one you signed. And you literally let this go on and nothing was done about it. Man, if you don't stop it, you're a scam. You're a fake politician and you need to be disbarred. You should be pulled off the office for this. And since you don't, if you're not going to be pulled off the office for it, then you should see you're wrong. Please don't act like a Christian no more. I blocked your ass a long time ago. I was mad that you came up on one of my business posts the other day with you and your wife and you are know, so community. No, you ain't no community. Damn nothing. You community for y'all. But I've still had to fight my innocence for two years and you haven't said one word in my defense. McNeil's you too, so we ain't friends. You acting like the cops, we damn sure ain't friends. So... Y'all all in cahoots is the way I look at it. Somebody be man enough to make this right. Because I'm not going to stop until we get to the highest court of the land. And when we get there, I will promise you I'm bringing the heat. I'm bringing way more pain than you would ever imagine. I have access to live witnesses that I'm still connected to. You don't think you don't know what I... I brought them out. You don't think I, you think I somehow don't talk to none of them anymore? I've got live witnesses. I've got text messages. I'm sure if we go to court discovery and we pull all of all of the dealerships past employees and current employees on records, you're going to see the evidence of the racist bullshit that Mr. Kimball tolerated in employment through his ten tenure. So now they're going to have to prove why they're lying about this. Now, our next claim, there is a difference between African-American car sales and Caucasian. You don't believe me? This court, court discovery is going to say, uh, we're going to pull a deal audit. Let's go into this office. Uh, uh, we got to go back here to this dealership's office now. And we're going to pull the last 10 years of every African-American car sale. And we're going to go through these deals and see if there's a difference. I'm telling you now, you don't even have to go through them because I'm telling you there's a difference because I was the finance manager that signed them. And I my pay structure was set up to make a certain X amount of dollars on certain deals. And I promise you, the reason they wanted my face out there, guys, this is why it was racist as hell, is because the person would feel more comfortable spending more money with me than they would with them. So they wanted me to come out there to soften that blow. This is the environment. So it's not hostile. I wasn't dealing with being called a nigger every day at the dealership, none of that. In fact, there was times when racist people came in like, like, like that, they got thrown out. So it was not that environment. So let me be clear when I say I'm not pulling the race card on them, trying to come up with some reason to come up with a dollar amount. And then I think McNeil's did go because they did this in my past. So I took that on my shit on my chest and handled it as long as I was tired of it. And then I got just got the hell out of there. Never once talked about it again. But then you expect all this stuff to go on and you call me and on the phone and say, this is the Swanton PD. And I don't, you don't even give a damn what's going on with me. You know what I, that took me through? I couldn't believe it because I already knew whoever this is, it's a, it's a scam because nobody is supposed to be impersonating law enforcement, especially not these racist bastards out here. And then the next thing I get told is you hear through the grapevine that I'm going to file a suit against them. And if it's true, you have to disconnect from me. All of this shit is connected, y'all. And if don't nobody want to be the one to say, we're, I'm the one that's responsible, come together and make me whole. And I'll stop. I'll call every national company that we put complaints in. I'll say they have satisfied this and we are have no desire to go any further. But as of right now, there have been national complaints lodged against both McNeil's and State Farm on every single national government association that there possibly could be. Whatever I couldn't get filed, my, my representatives have filed. 
I'm talking about we are not going to stop. We have a set up on Facebook to automatically tag these guys and post automatically. So people think I'm posting and I'm not. I know how to set social media up. So I'm going to destroy you guys socially and you're not going to even realize it. People are going to put in your name and see your dirty laundry as long as you want to keep sit back and act like this is not important. And you just ignore me because that's what's done. I ain't even got a call. So that's telling me you don't care. You want to go to court? Okay, fine. That's what's going to happen. But I want y'all to know what's going on the whole time. So I'm keeping y'all in tune with the, the, the more this goes on, how much more racist it's getting, how much more ridiculous it's getting. Because I promise you, if I looked like them, there would have already been a check cut and my business would have never been ripped from me, stolen, resold. I'd be re back. I would have been a back open. Been back open. They ain't give a damn. They thought I was involved in a scam or I didn't have insurance like the standard person. And they dropped the ball. And everybody involved here, somebody got to, somebody going to have to pay the piper. Y'all going to wait till I lose my home? Oh, let that happen. Let that happen. Let that happen. You want to wait till me and my wife are divorced? Please let that happen. I will do everything I can possibly do in my power until I get your business closed down. Everything I possibly can do in my natural life power. If you touch my family in that level, where now I lose my home or I lose my wife. We have a problem. You have time to fix this and you have my demand. Man up. Stop the bullshit. You racist bastards. You know what you did. Now it's time to fix it. Stop trying to justify your wrongdoing and don't waste the court's time, the honorable court's time trying to come in here and justify why you racist as hell. Don't do that. Don't come up with no lies, because I got records. Don't come up with no new records. They lost records. Stay firm. I give them 2,300 documents, and they lose 500 documents early on. They say, it's, I'm sending too many documents. They can't even keep record of them. Whose fault is that? But in the end, you say, my, my records ain't right. Well, what about the fact that you lost 500? That's why they not. Maybe we need to go back to our records before we say that. No, they said that and used that after at first it was I had something to do with. Man, I'm done with these people and I'm not going to stop. I'm going to sound the alarm. I was just about to take, I took a bath and was about to go to bed. I was going to lay across the bed. I said, no, no, no. Why? Why do I have any respect for them to where I think that was a, it's enough? It's not enough until I'm made whole. And that means every time my eyes are open, I can sit my ass down and make sure the public knows every step of the way and how many times I have tried through my representatives even to give them the opportunity. The only thing we're waiting for right now is a response from the Ohio Supreme Court. And we're confident we're going to get that because we prove we proved to them why they need to intervene. No, I, I don't want that no more. First of all, the first judge that we, let me tell you all this. The first judge that was supposed to make the decision on my case had to sign off on the case. Knew somebody in the circle. You know how the judge, if he knows somebody, he can't take the case. That went on too. And so according to them, they couldn't get a new judge for the next almost year. And they had to bring in a guy that's getting ready to retire from Lucas County. Judge Bates, the scam. That guy in 10 seconds dismissed all of my claim. Didn't even hear our trial brief. But he dismissed it in a way for me to come back to the court again and ask for what happened again. Why did he do that? Because he knew I had issues and I have legitimate claims. But if I dismiss this right now, I'm getting ready to have knee surgery and I'm getting ready to retire. And I'm from a whole different county. You really think that judge gave? Share this information, please. I will remember you. If you can help me in any way to help sound this alarm, to get this national as we can get it. It's, I've tried to reach every so-called uh, uh, national place, even down to Al Sharpton scam. He had no response. 
Roland Martin, no response. Like, what's the other scam? The black dude that always defending everybody, no response. They want to defend us when we are a criminal or getting killed. But when legitimate cases like this happen, where any other Caucasian person would have went through this, would have already had a check. We go unheard. Attorneys can't take the case. They would rather not take the case and get into the argument with State Farm because they might have to defend State Farm. So you go through that argument. Do I got to go through this attorney? I gotta, and then it, you want to go, do you want to uh, contingency fee? Do you want this? Stop thinking. When you are the victim, that you always need somebody else to explain to a jury of your peers what truly happened to you. I'm not up here lying. This ain't no O.J. Simpson situation where he got off on the technicality because his ass did it. You can block me all you want. His ass did it. I don't care what you say. He did it. And the only reason he got off was because of the mistakes of the prosecution. Let's just call it what it is. That that's why I can respect and honor the justice system. I don't respect what that judge did because I can see right through why he did what he did. I didn't even get to see him. I never even got to suit up and you signing documents with my attorney that are saying, no, Mr. Kimmel, don't get ready for court. What? After I went a whole year. You're the attorney, second attorney. You were referred to me by my first attorney. What do you mean? No explanation. This was supposed to be at the beginning of January. And I've been fighting my innocence since. And State Farm has just been, I've reported this several times through several channels through the Department of uh, uh, Insurance. I can't believe they won't intervene. The first time they came back with some scam that they couldn't intervene and, and whatever it was, I don't even know what it was. So I come back again and came with another complaint. This time I came with the facts of what has truly happened. State of Ohio, I implore you to investigate and, 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 and get involved with this in every level as possible. Why? Because I signed and swore in to uphold your constitution and my constitution, both of them. My rights have been severely violated from all of these entities, and some of them happen to be public office. So I, I'm urging you to please get involved. I'm not on here looking for nothing. I'm not trying to swindle nobody. I've got the receipts of everything I can, that I've just said, on, even on this video. It's no different than any video you want to go back and listen to. I'm not here to swindle you. I was mistreated and I was quiet long enough and I let y'all have long enough decision to say that this is, I can't believe how ridiculous and stupid that you are or that you don't even care enough to say that this is wrong. You would rather it hit the papers and the news how you mistreated the only African-American business in the city of Swan. You rather that. Okay. I'm waiting on you. John LaRich, Jason Koss, and or your attorneys, State Farm, I've emailed your attorney directly from my personal email four to five times. My representative's email, no response. You know why they won't respond? Because what I have on the true facts on what happened on my original complaint that they have, they have none of that on their complaints because my attorney never talked about it. So I'm sorry for you, State Farm. You didn't know the true facts of this, but I'm going to sound the bell and ring the bell until somebody understands what they did to me. State Farm, they are the most racist, discriminatory people as a corporation. They mistreated another corporation that way, not just the person, a corporation. That happened to be my salary, my wife's salary, my sister's salary, everything went up in flames. And they just watched it. So please, if you can share this information as much as you can share this information with me, I really, 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 really promise you it will be worth your while because this is not the end of the story for Marquise Kimball.
You don't get to do that to a person that has never been a criminal and never have tried to employ to even want to be in their face like that. I tried to do right. Get back to the community. Do the right thing for y'all. Almost 10 years of my life out there. And it's all written for me. With evidence that I, there's no way I was involved. And nobody stood up, manned up, and did what was right. So, John LaRich, you involved. Because you own predominantly most of McNeil's. So until you can show me a document that you, you're not, I know you got the dollars. Man up. Go ahead and accept that your, your manager dropped the ball. And since he dropped the ball, it's worth your while not to get in this mess with me. Or every time you, we get a tag with McNeil's, you're tagged too. And you can't even try to pull the defaming your character because I'm not lying about you. I'm telling you and the public truthful statements that I can prove in court. So get into the war with me if you want. I think it's stupid on your behalf. But it's up to you. I'm waiting. Mayor Neil, Neil Tote, where you at? What, what the hell? What do you mean? I, I don't even want to hear from the new chief because he wasn't the guy that let this happen. Happens to be a guy that looks a little bit like me. I don't know if he's really black or half black or whatever he is. I know this stuff. I do my homework. Okay? But him calling me is nothing. What, so you're going to say sorry? Give me a key to the city? I don't want none of that. What will make me whole is when you make me financially whole again. And if it comes from their department, I know your boss need, your boss is the mayor. So before you even call me, before I can even respect your call, I need to hear from your boss who lied to me. I lose respect for that just because you lied. You, you said and made me a promise and made me believe that I had, if I didn't have nobody else in my defense, I had the mayor. That's what I thought. And you let these guys drop my investigation and no questions of why, no answers of why. You're going to have to be named. I'm sorry for you, brother. Unless you can find a way to get in here and, 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 and be a man and make me whole. Oh, oh, you don't you, you gibberish talking in tongues now? Okay, well then you have to be named. Because this all happened under your leadership. You're supposed to be the mayor of the country, the city. And my office was a merely three minutes from you. Let's not forget the day of the incident. I called the insurance agent several times and he ignored me each time. He's six minutes away. The dealership's eight minutes. They all in the same area. And nobody can tell me what happened. What they can tell me is I had a valid insurance policy that should have been paid out a long time ago. And since they put up the fight, they now have made themselves responsible for every fire that has happened in my life personally, as well as my corporation. The way to stop the bleeding is to make me whole. While it's the way it is now. Because if not, I promise you, when we go to the Ohio Supreme Court, I'm going to demand more. And they're going to see fit to it. You don't blame me. Go look around, look around the city. Go look around the country. The United States government does not tolerate this type of behavior, especially to another fellow public servant. So have it your way. I implore you to act now. Like I said, you don't got the balls to call me or you think you're gonna scare me with your attorney. You're sadly mistaken, I'm waiting. Because I want your attorney to explain to me on the phone like I'm a two-year-old how he's going to defend my racial discriminatory treatment that I allowed that I can prove. How is he going to defend that? The only thing he can do is try to get me to come down on what, what my request is. That's all he can do. And I'm telling you now, if that's your plan, there's no negotiating, so don't waste your time or your money on your legal defense. You might as well wait until we go to court. But please give me your attorney because I want to hear him say that so I can get this, make that a video and tell the public. Please, please tell me. I'm, I'm waiting for somebody to say, please contact our attorney. Wait. Because that will be recorded and put out to the public. Because there's no defense. They need to man up and make this right. I'm the Minister of Mel Kimball. Till next time, be blessed.